afternoon, the old magpie brewing had a bit of a hiatus. Haven't put a video up for a while since I've retired. I've uh, been a bit busy doing other things, I suppose. No excuse. Bought a 3D printer and uh, been printing some stuff, some useful, some useless. I rather like this though. Now I'm retired, <coughs> seems applicable, but anyway, here today, we're here today to have a look at some brew kettles from Cheeky Peak Brewery. They're a local, well when I say local, they're a, an Australian firm that, out of Wodonga of on the New South Wales Victorian border and the reason I've, I've got some Cheeky Peak Brewery kettles is my 40 litre Guten after many many brews and hot hot water being used as a HLT spat the dummy and it spat the large element so I looked around, I thought oh, I'll just get a I'll just get a, a bigger urn, you know, like a 30, 40 litre urn. And I looked around and there wasn't much about really, like for the price of them, and then I had a look at the bank balance and the bank books and seen what I could couldn't afford. Had a look on the internet. And I thought let's have a crack at 3V. Anyway, so I give Sam a ring. Sam and Stacy a ring at Cheeky Peak Brewery because you know I'm pretty foreign to 3B systems, very foreign, never had one. Had a bit of a yarn, really good to talk to Sam, especially Sam, very knowledgeable. He, I explained what I wanted, he told me probably what I'd get away with, and he was pretty right too, you know, like. So what I've ended up with, in short, is I've ended up with a 95 litre mash tun, which could be too big, but we'll sort that out anyway. It'll be really good, I think, for the 50, 60 litre brews that I, that I normally do. It's just when I do a 23 litre, 30 litre batch, I'm not real sure, but we'll give it a crack. And I bought a 70 litre boiler. And then I bought a do-it-yourself Herms because I think I can that Herms will fit in my grandfather urn and so I'll punch some holes in and so I purchased it. And that'll leave my Guten 70 as a very, very good HLT. And I can still brew with it because I won't have to punch holes in it for a Herms. So I'll get the ugly mug off and uh, we'll have a bit of a look at these units. So first off we'll look at the mash tun. It's quite big. 95 litres I suppose it's got to be big. Starting from the top. So on the top there's a, a dual outlet. There's also a right angle piece for that which I haven't fitted. But the idea of that is on one side you can have your sparge and on the other side you can have your mash water or, or your herms feed. So it's very, very handy that way. Everything's um, done with triclover. Then as we move down the bottom, got a dial temperature gauge and it's got an adjustment on it like all those dial temperature gauges on the back. Um, and then we have an inlet outlet it'll probably for me be an outlet but it's got a glass area in it so that you can see how clear your word is how, how, how much rubbish you're getting in and then on the other side what you can see there is, is a tap where you can take samples throughout the mash I find that very handy because I've got into the habit I really like to take samples of the mash when the mash is over, for the mash out, for the pre-boil, whatever, I, I, I want to take samples. 
So then when we move around there, snuck away in the corner there, there's a two inch triclover outlet. And you can put an element, an electric element in there. Um, I probably will just block that off because I can't see that I'll, with the Herms unit, I can't see that I'll have an element in the mash kettle. Now the other thing with the mash kettle, and oh gee, I'm impressed with the filter, or the false bottom. It is solid. So it's full bottom coverage of the tum, mash tum. Two millimetre holes, two millimetres apart. But where it gets impressive, you can also see down here, we've got more filtration area, and there's two gaps. So there's a gap for your element, and there's another small particular filter, particulate filter. So that's for that. But what I really like is the horseshoe, which is more two, two, me, two mil holes. And it's set in a horseshoe that is actually, so you got a lot of ways of, of you know, getting a really clear mesh using this. Um, I tend to, when I boil or no, I tend to throw hops in willy-nilly, but the more rubbish I can keep out of the boil, as in grain pieces and that, um, I, I just like it. So that's a really solid unit and I'm impressed. I'm impressed with the whole build really because Cheeky Peak uh, they're a, an Australian company and they design these mash tons, their sizes and, and the size they want and the system they want. They're all designed in Australia. Not everything's built in Australia but you know nothing is these days and that's that's fine. But all the the uh, triclover fittings and everything, that's all done in Australia. And it's really neat. They, they do a really neat job. So, um, as much as they can in Australia, and then there's things that just can't be done in Australia, as we all know these days, the manufacturing situation. I'm impressed with Cheeky Peak Brewery. I, I've spoke to them a couple of times, rang them, messaged them, and... Um, I like I like their gear. It's good quality. It looks really nice. Good quality, and there's nothing nicer than stainless steel in a brew room. Let's face it. Anyway, onto the boil. Onto the boiler. So the boiler has a dual two-inch triclover fitting on the side for electric elements, and once again. You have a dial, you have a dial thermometer, you have a clear glass filtering, oh, you can get a filter, I didn't get the filter, but you've got a clear glass area where you can see how good your word is. And then on the other side there's an inlet there, and that actually is a whirlpool, there's a whirlpool arm hidden behind that. So um, that's very good. We'll have a look at that. The lid also has... So the lid... I'll just show you my magpie there. He's all right, eh? Went all right last year, the boys. Anyway, the, the lid has a 1.5 triclover fitting in it. It could be for stilling or whatever, but uh, it's probably for a CIP. I've got a spray ball. And that's what I'll be using it for. I'll, I'll, um, I'll be cleaning in place. Have a peek down inside the Cheeky Peak. And there you have it. So on the right hand side you have the Whirlpool arm. And then on the left hand side that's your pick up for when you're getting the word out. 
So that's adjustable and uh, you can start off a bit higher to get the cleaner wort and or you can stay above the, the, the rubbish like I, I actually like to throw hops in um, fairly naked and I probably should get a, a filter for that um, but anyway um, it won't hurt to use bags but I'll give that whirlpool a, a bit of a go see how we go with it so that's the boiler quite simple looking quite effective looking and this can be electric or gas so after second thoughts as we all have second thoughts I've actually ordered the high pressure gas system off Cheeky Peak Brewery should be here in the next couple of days so I'm going to try the gas and I, I just think um, I might get a better boil with gas you know it's another one of them things I've never done I've always had like the Guten 70s or the Guten 40 the single vessel system and uh, so I've never really played around much I'm hoping to get a brighter beer um, and then the other the other thing where I think the, the kettles will be the 3V system will be very effective is when I do double brew days so then when we swing around we have a look this is the, the do it yourself Herms so I'm hoping it's stainless steel tubing it looks like half inch stainless steel tubing 3.8 um, everything comes with it you see here so you, so you get your tap um, you get your parts the, the of course go there you get the washers and you get the T-junction which you can put a thermo well in also so I'm hoping this fits in the grain father that you can see just poking its head in the background there um, it's a 17 litre grain father urn I'm hoping the herms I can get the herms in it so I don't have to punch any holes in the Guten 70 but if I do in the Guten 70 it'll be alright because I'll be tri clover and um, if I need to use it as a single vessel of course it can be blocked off so to knock the holes in it I've purchased this little unit so this little unit you drill yourself a pilot hole this is a 20 mil unit 22 mil unit the instructions for the Herms unit are very well stated on the internet on the web of, of the Cheeky Peak Brewery page so basically you, you drill a, pro, pi, a pilot hole looks like about 6 maybe 7 mil 8 mil but you drill that through then with this you can see it's sort of uh, it's got three parts to it you get it together and then you, you screw it together when it comes to meet the stainless steel so instead of drilling it through and making a big mess and bits and pieces and filings and that it just punches a hole out for you nice see how it goes now the only other the other thing is cheeky Pete recommend um, that the kettles be passivated and I'll passivate those there's no problem with that um, I'll use the citric acid mess citric acid method as described on their website so again to, to find the part of that all you do is go to the Cheeky Peak website have a look at a Nano X kettle and then you'll see a, a link there to the passivation the other thing I will mention so in the lid of the mash tun have a shower ball it's quite large and a shower ball of course I don't think will spray as harsh as a spray ball 
So when I passivate, I'm going to use the shower ball and I have a spray ball. I currently have a keg clean system and um, I'll use that in the boiler so I'll, we'll put some uh, solution in and go that way. I also purchased a 65 watt um, pump. I've got a couple of 25s here which will be enough to put the mash water in. And when I do the mash water, like I'm going to play around with this a bit, I suppose. It's going to change the way I brew. It's more, more hands-on way of brewing than a single system, which is fine because I don't really leave the single system when I brew. Um, when I put the grains in the mash tun, I'm actually going to feed the mash water from below the grain. So I'll put the grain in, feed the feed the mash water in um, and that's how we'll we'll work that out the the kettles themselves have markers and they're etched in so they've got volume liquid markers water markers brew markers so they're there, they're quite easy to see and that's one of the reasons you need to be careful when you passivate these kettles because you don't want to rub them markers off. I believe you can get an outside um, level, liquid level gauge and put it in yourself and I'll probably go that way because um, I'm just used to it. Neil from Magpie Brewing saying cheerio, happy brewing everyone and we'll passivate these and we'll get a brew on and we'll show you whether I'm successful or need more work. Possibly the latter. Cheers.